Holy crap. We hit a parlay. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up. Tuesday morning, this back. is yeah, Run It yeah. Back. Nate Michelle Beadle joined by my esteemed panelists, and we will get to the excitement because I cannot wait. Stadium Insider Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons, the hero really of the day, said by many. And of course, Eddie G there on the end. Guys, have we absorbed the reality that we are parlay winners? Has it we're on it's fire. happened? We're yeah, on we're fire. on fire. This is the beginning of a streak, unlike anything that's ever been seen before in the world of gambling. I'm very excited to be a, just a very small part of all of it. And we will get things started right away with, of course, the Mavs, the Suns. This was the game last night. Look at this dude. Chandler freaking Parsons. Courtside with Mark Cuban and, and the legend Dirk. Um, go ahead, Chandler. Why don't you give us a report on what you saw last night? Uh... Yeah, this was a fun game. This this didn't feel like a Monday night game in early <laughs> December. This was the place was rocking. Uh, Michael Parsons and Diggs were in there with OBJ and the whole whole mm. crowd. Chasing OBJ. My money is that they Cowboys sign him very soon. <laughs> uh, and and we, we said it before the show. Listen, this was a game that meant more to the Mavs. And, uh, you know, they went up 18 after the first quarter and never really looked back after that. And, they had a brilliant game plan against Devin. They, they basically took the ball out of his hands early. They were not going to let him beat them. Uh, if I'm if I'm Phoenix, I kind of flush this one. I realize that we're staying afloat without two starters. But this game meant a lot. This game meant a lot to Lucas. The the Mavs are starting to play a little better. And when you get games like this from from Hardaway and Christian Wood and this kid Josh Green is getting so much no, better. Man, I can hear nobody. Uh, th- this is a uh, th- this is a big step for for the Mavs moving forward. Uh, you know, we'll get to your part in it because I do think you um you were an MVP last night for the Maverick squad. But Shams, I, there are some teams that just seem to bring out an extra zhuzh from others, and maybe the Suns are that for the Mavs. Mavs, is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, they trailed against those Suns last year during the West semifinals. They were they were they were down and counted out in that game 7 in Phoenix, and then they miraculously win. And like every time I think of that Luka Doncic Devin Booker matchup, I think of when Luka Doncic was looking up at Devin Booker when they were up in that series and that was obviously a meme and uh, you know, it, it's <laughs> still a picture that people look at today, but those two guys went at it as well. Like there were moments that those two uh, you know, where they kind of went at each other either off the court, on the court. Um, and, and I think that is only be- much better for this rivalry. But I think there's no doubt Chandler was there. He can speak to it a little bit more. But there's more juice and definitely more energy for those Mavericks. They, it's like they want to prove a point to the Suns every time out. And that's interesting because it's, it's usually supposed to be vice versa. For, for a Suns team that, that got destroyed on their home court in that game seven, you would have thought they would have brought more energy on opening night, last night. So I'm still waiting for that moment for the Suns. Um, you know, Devin Booker, no Chris Paul last night. That's tough. But um, when this team is fully healthy, I really want to see the type of energy that they bring against the Mavericks. I love that Luka Doncic has just waged war on this team for whatever reason. He didn't like... <laughs> something Devin Booker and Booker said to him and just said, you know what? It, it's on. Uh, we need a rivalry like this. I hope we get another playoff series from these two teams. Uh, they, they just match up in such a way that makes it intriguing. And, it, you know, when Luca has a big fella like this to pick on, it allows him to really be the player he wants to be. But, yeah, that little grudge he has, whatever it is, whatever happened, I hope it continues to happen. I hope Book leans into it as well because <laughs> look at that he didn't exactly there it is the haymaker there it back is. at him last night <laughs> no I, and I, by the way i wonder because we we've sort of mentioned it slightly i suppose that this phoenix suns team as good as they are and as, and as well as devin booker's been playing they don't get talked about with the same sort of i don't know emphasis like a lot of other teams is this why because when they play a team like dallas that they should have a, a little hatred towards they sort of lay down. Like, is that why we don't respect them the same way we do other greats, Chandler? I'll tell you right now, it pisses D book off for sure, because he's one of these guys that's leading the Suns without two starters to the number one record in the West. And he's still not talked about. And this is a dude that was first team all NBA last year. And he's 
kind of playing better this year. So, yeah, I, I think it bothers him that Luca, John Moran, these guys, Tatum now, these guys are getting all the love, all the respect, and no one really talks about D-Book in the light that they honestly should. And 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 there isn't a real beef between Devin and Luca, but it, it is fun. It's fun for the game. It's fun for the <laughs> It's fun for the crowd. They got all the shirts and you know, Luca holding a baby with Devin's face on it. Like the, the crowd is fully engaged into this rival. And I'll tell you right now, Luca thinks he's better than Devin, and Devin thinks he's better than Luca, and they're going to be going at it for years to come. Chandler, That's I fair. hate that you ruined Chandler, the I want to know. I was well. hoping that they were like getting ready to box after every game, and Luca and and Book hates that picture and never wants to see his smile again. I, like Luca is like a psycho because there's either like the Jordan type psycho where he's just a menace or there's that picture where it's like, you idiot. Like you're just smiling at your foe. Um, I will say, I'm mad. Luca, I'm mad that you ruined it I love for me, it. by the way. Wrestling Luca also, space, thanks. Luca's got to learn that they only get one challenge. Every time he doesn't get a call, he can't go like this to the bench. Oh, that's he funny. Probably, <laughs> he probably did that seven times last night. It's totally fair. At least one will work. Shams, you were going to say something? Chandler, I want to know. Yeah, I want to know what is what is it like sitting next to Mark Cuban during a game? Like I've heard different things about the experience. I want to know firsthand what was that like right. last night for you? Listen, he's so him and his money guy Charlie are the two guys that are always right there, and and they are so into it. Mark is just <laughs> pounding the refs all game long. Oh, he's very he's very interactive with the fans. He's very interactive with the players on the bench. He, he, he's shouting at Jay Kidd half the time. He is a. Uh, He's passionate to say the least, um, but the the thing you'll recognize is he's just all over the refs. Whether he's right or wrong, he is just <laughs> on the refs for for forty. That's gonna be exhausting. It's yeah, gotta it be exhausting. Um, you know what though, Booker with eleven points. Let's not just glide over that little interesting nugget right there, considering. That was probably the star of our four leg parlay last night, and it was partly. I mean, Chandler, are you taking credit for it? That's really all I want to know. Listen, I took him hostage the night before, but that had nothing to do with him him playing bad. That uh, and I had I didn't see the Matt Scott report either, but they they were throwing doubles at this guy. They were not letting him go. And when he goes left, he likes to get to his pull up, and every time he went left, they sent someone that way for the double team. Uh, this was they, they basically said that these other guys are going to beat us, and we don't think they can. And and they got out to such an early start where where this game was kind of over after the first quarter. But yeah, this was this was this was a very good detailed scout report on how to kind of maintain him. I would, if I'm Phoenix, I would look to do what they did to Devin to Luca next time they play each other. Right. That was a, that was, yeah, he clicked that game on. It was like, what is going on here? Um, Moving on to another game out of the Western conference last night. I'm going to speak very quietly because I don't want to scare him away. Uh, but Kawhi was in the game and hit the game winner. And I sure would like for him to stick around for a few more games. So this was a moment Shams um, for you. The most important thing, for this Clippers squad coming off that win is what? Well, to me, it's it's the building of chemistry. Like these guys, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, they, they have to be on the floor. They've only played five mm. games with each other all season. So uh, I think they're at a, a little over 100 over the course of their, their, their contracts. When they both joined uh, the Clippers in 2019, they've only played a, a little over 100 games with each other. So... Th- these guys getting on the floor, you could you could tell around the organization and some of Ty Lue's comments, like they, they've been exasperated at times because of how injury plagued that this roster has been. And it's for sure got to be frustrating when they're, when your key guys, your core guys miss time. But now it seems like they're on the other side. Kawhi Leonard said post game, he loves the game. He wants to play as much as he can. So of course for the Clippers, it's going to be about th- that coming true and coming to fruition because they need him, him and Paul George to get reps because otherwise this you can't just expect this team in the second half of the season without building up the right habits to be ready uh, when it matters most. Yeah, like like Sean said, this is just huge for them to kind of get everybody on the on the floor. And, and Norman Powell now is the only guy out last night, but this is a big step for them just to kind of get that rhythm down. They, I can't imagine they even had much practice time together as a, their normal starting unit. So, you know, to, to get a win and for to Kawhi to now kind of go off this and kind of back in the flow, hitting a game winner, being the guy on the floor at the end of the games. Uh, He feels good this morning. uh, And this is big for the Clippers because it's always been health with them. It's always going to be health with them. And I still think when they are fully loaded and and healthy, that they're a contender. So 
uh, th this was really, really big just to have them on the floor together. And, and now we just need Norman Powell back to be, you know, fully loaded. Yeah, I love that, you know, Kawhi is still showing us he can do it when need be. The, the, this team is scary for everybody in the West and everybody in the league, period. I mean, if you look forward to uh, the, uh, a matchup with the Celtics or even the Bucks, they have the size and the defensive versatility to match them. Nick Batum has been amazing for them this year. It's more in like a offensive, defensive rating type of way. He's not going to give you a bunch of buckets, but he just matters for them defensively. But look, the league is just more fun when – Beatles MVP Kawhi is out there doing stuff <laughs> like you. this. He's one of the more clutch players in the league. He he's so physically dominant from the wing with with the way he positions himself in the mid range and knocks down shots just like that. He's he's amazing to watch. So I'm just happy whenever he's out there. And if they're gonna stagger these guys all year, at least give us a little bit of advance warning because <laughs> I didn't realize till about well, I don't know six minutes left in the second. Wait, Kawhi's playing. And right. then I had to tune in and see some of this. So uh, thanks for letting us know, Shams. I, I didn't see the tweet <laughs> that day. <laughs> I think sh nobody can keep up because we don't know until the last second. By the way, just Kawhi being Kawhi will never change. Hits the game winner, stone face. Like you would never know that that was the last shot of the game, that it was a W. Like it's just, it's a weird dude. He's just wired differently. And it's kind of fun to watch sometimes. Uh, the Rockets don't look now, but I believe we got to have ourselves a contender, ladies and gentlemen. Upset Philadelphia <laughs> double overtime. James Harden back on the court. Eddie, 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 Eddie. How do the Sixers lose this? Um, they're a really weird team. We, we we've <laughs> talked about this before. You know, Joel fouls out, and, and, and things kind of tumble from there. And they're playing, you know, hot potato all night. Y your turn, my turn. Uh, James isn't quite. He's back, but he's not back. He's on a minutes restriction. They have to take him out in overtime. He goes back in. They still lose. He misses a game winner. Uh, th this is just an oddball team. And the Rockets aren't nearly as bad as their record <laughs> stop, is going to make them it. out to be. And, uh, yeah, uh, it was a little it was a little baby's birthday. So, I think James has my elsewhere. Big party last night. A lot of money <laughs> on some pool table. So, Cash. like, the real game <laughs> was about 2 a.m., in Houston at uh what's it called 13 it wasn't at the the whatever they call that <laughs> arena now <laughs> yeah, whatever it's called <laughs> yeah this was, uh, I, I can't imagine James was too focused and dialed in for this game um <laughs> and, and like Eddie said Houston these teams that are still that are kind of tanking they're still very talented and the league is so spaced out with talent now that there's going to be games like last night where guys can take over and guys can play well and and, and they're not going to lose every single game but uh i don't know what the rockets are doing this is one of those teams where it's like they should not be winning these games but these kids are young and they're hungry and they have energy and, and they're not just going to go down there and lay down they're playing for their livelihood they're playing for their contracts and uh this was a game where you know james Harden was the face of Houston for many years was coming back and, and these kids weren't just going to lay down and let him you know go to work so uh, I, I don't I don't agree with it I think they should be losing as much as possible and and they are doing a pretty good job at that but these are the games that are just kind of mind-boggling of how and why they are winning it I mean yeah, James, James said had... we only get one trip here a year and right? fellas I gotta live it up tonight uh we're not no doing doubt. three overtimes we really shouldn't have did two so two, we're out of here. Two overtimes. <laughs> by the way he did he had like a soliloquy about his love for the city of Houston after I mean it was it was very odd but is anyone shocked that 38 minutes for a guy coming off the injury list like I, I thought that was kind of a high number Shams you're you're nodding like did you think that was a high number I think Doc said pregame that he was on a minutes restriction. Uh, listen, I actually think that James wanted to win. I think he actually wanted to win in his in his return. He he circled this game as his return. He hadn't played in a month. Like he wanted to come back for this game. He wanted to get a win in Houston. He was the face of that organization for a while. I think it did mean a, a good amount to him, no matter what the post game plans were. I think he did want to get a win. But he just like like Eddie and Chandler talk about. He just didn't shoot the ball well from the field. He didn't play well. Um, and I think overall, this team, like, they need to also get on the floor together to, because they need to figure out how they're going to play. They, they're, the playing styles, we've been talking about it since the first week of the regular season. Their playing styles can be totally different when one or the other is on the floor. So how can they together get that chemistry uh, so that when it matters most, they're both actually playing, uh, you know, as one? I, by the way, can we just really quickly... 
being given a bag full of cash as a birthday present, are we for or against? Let's just raise uh, our absolutely. hands. Absolutely. Like. We, we, like, yeah, but, okay. Can, but can I also then just be the nerd? <laughs> if you put it on social media, does the IRS not come a calling? <laughs> like I, I feel- think. <laughs> No, I think it's got to be a lot more than that. But yeah, I'd, I'd rather take the cash. I, 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 there's nothing worse than getting a gift that you don't want. You got to ask for the receipt. You got to ask where you got it and try to take it back. Just give me the cash and let me spend it however I may. <laughs> oh, note to yeah, self. Guys, Let's guys, try to, we're to get the worst presents for Chandler ever. Yeah, exactly. Guys, since we're so into my birthday, yes, I'm all for <laughs> cash on the birthday nope, and belated nope. or not. Whatever Parlor it cash may right be. there. I, yeah. I want to give the. Can we give the Rockets a little bit of credit though before Absolutely. we move on to what's next? That uh, Jalen Green's having a great second year season for a lot of people who doubted him. There was comments this summer from reporters saying, "Hey, he'll top off as a bench guy and all this other stuff." And Jabari Smith Jr., who people were off oh, yeah. real early into this year, fifteen and seven over his last eight games, forty-seven floor, forty-five from three. Uh, they got some talent out there in Houston. Give, give these guys some time. It. We we love what they're doing in Orlando. Let's enjoy a little bit what's going on in Houston as well. Yeah, and as a Spurs fan, I say Rockets, go out there and win them all. You just do you, and you be great. Okay. Oh, don't you worry. The Spurs are going <laughs> to lose it. them all. Don't worry. <laughs> Not on purpose, though, okay? Uh, we got a little Pacers. How about the Pacers, by the way? There's some... It's a weird night. Uh, Pacers with the win over the Warriors. The rookie, speaking of some rookies here, Andrew Nebhardt, 31, 8, and 13. Let me just say that before last night, didn't even have a listing on the uh, on the rookie of the year, FanDuel Sportsbook. Now he's plus 24,000. Curry with 12 and 37. Um, guys, I, I don't even know where to start. Do we start with the rookie or do we start with the fact that Curry only had 12 points in 37 minutes? I say we start there. How? How was Indiana able to? to keep Curry down like that, Chandler? I mean, look, they're, they're that Car- Carlisle, Lloyd Pierce, these guys, they're going to get them to play hard. And and there's, again, Halliburton's out. There's another opportunity now, and we'll, we'll get to the rookie. Um, but this is this is a weird game for the Warriors. They had Jordan Poole and Clay both starting, who actually shot well. And then you have, you know, off nights from Steph Curry. You have <laughs> off nights from Draymond Green. And to me, I think this kind of shows the value of Andrew Wiggins. He's kind of – there's an article that came out in the Bay Area that he's no doubt the second best player, the second most important player on this team on both sides of the ball. And it doesn't matter if he's having an off-shooting night, an on-shooting night. He does so many things for this team that lead to winning. And it, it kind of showed last night. Uh, they can play in multiple positions. They can switch more with him and Draymond. He's kind of that glue guy to me. And, and when Steph shoots like this and, you know – He's not going to have many ineffective games like this. Uh, this, uh, this to me, just shows you the value of Andrew Wiggins uh, to this team. Yeah, I'm with Chandler. They they missed Wiggins for sure last night. As far as Steph goes, I mean, Rick Carlisle is a great coach. We all know it. Chandler knows it personally. And they they went with a smaller lineup without Miles Turner in there. They they started Jalen Smith as the nominal center. And they basically chased him around all night. They did as best they could do to keep up with him all night, make every bucket tough. And, yeah, I mean, Steph, with the degree of difficulty with everything he does, he's he's bound to have a few of these a season. And it just is what it is. But, yeah, I mean, they, they, they switched everything. They chased him down everywhere they got. And they're an athletic team. Benedict Matherin, uh, even Buddy Hill is fleet of foot. He's used to playing that style of running through screens and, and chasing guys out and, and, and splitting the gap. So, they just came in with a really good game plan. Like Chandler said, they weren't as well game plan for Clay, who went off, and for Jordan Poole. But you get what the rookie gives you on offense, and that's that's a recipe for victory. How about the fact that we've mentioned Andrew Nebhard now in, in two two times in a week, had the game winner. Um, anybody shocked? Anybody surprised? Did anybody know who he was, really? Coming yeah, into this season. Uh, you know what he he's been he was a five star recruit in high school. He went to University of Florida, which is obviously my alma mater, and he transferred and was very solid for Gonzaga. Um, but he was a highly touted kid coming out. He always had very very good vision. Uh, he always could really pass the ball. He played at Montverde in high school and, uh, you know, had always had really good teammates and, and could really see the floor. Now, I'm looking at this tweet where it says Andrew Nimhart has played 131 college games and never once scored more than 25 points. So <laughs> <laughs> this I don't I, listen. I don't know if we'll ever do this again, but. He is is turning into a solid guard in the league and taking advantage of his opportunity. 
and, and he's solid with the ball. He can shoot the ball. Um, and like I said, it's always been his vision for me, but yeah, he never did this at UF, unfortunately. Well, there you go. He's, Beetle, he's I'm only avoiding it. I'm only avoiding it because I don't want to butcher his name, but you can see the talent there. He's, he's, a, he's a good shooter. And, and with that system they have, I mean, we've watched Tyrese Halliburton lead the league and assist. They're able to spread out. They shoot the fourth most threes in the league and they make the fifth most. They jack them up all night. And, and, and they're able to have nights like this for your point guard from your, from your primary ball handler. And yeah, it helps for him to shoot as well as he did. And the Warriors to apparently not care to guard once mm. Andrew Wiggins wasn't there. Uh, but it's nice to see somebody like this have, have a great week. And yeah, you know, you, now you can look towards him later as, as Halliburton gets back, maybe a bigger role, maybe a little bit more trust from Rick Carlisle, who historically does not like young players at all. It's not like rookies <laughs> at all. Uh, but he's in a different situation now and we'll have to give those guys a little bit more leash than he's used to. Wait a minute. I want to hear how you would butcher it. Is it because it's an odd sounding name with kind of weirdness to it? Let me hear it. I Nem- mean, I know it's Nem hard now that you've said it Nem-hard. a few times. So I it's just, like nerdy, but cool. Sure. I don't know. I kind of <laughs> like it. Detective Nim hard. All right. We're moving on to another team that I'm just really pulling for uh, as much as possible. Really? The Oklahoma City Thunder. Who doesn't want to see these guys win? And that's exactly what they did, beating the Hawks. Uh, SGA with 35. P.S. The Thunder were down 14 in the third quarter. And the Hawks, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. They've lost six games. They were up by double digits. Let's start there. How do you lose this particular game? Who wants to start? Chandler. I'll start. I mean, oh, your, good. Over here. Your, your best player uh, doesn't want to play. Uh, it, <laughs> and, and Sam Sarani tells the world the day before you have to play <laughs> a game at home. So... Uh, that, that, I mean, that's part of it, but this is a flawed team. The Thunder, they came in motivated, and I think I think for Shea, it might be a little bit extra here as well. He was the best player on the floor last night, and yeah, I'm looking at him being in an all-star game this year, and maybe Trey won't be. I don't know. He keeps playing how he's I mean, playing. Maybe Trey won't make the trip to Utah. Yeah, listen, they, they were missing John Collins. They were missing DeAndre Hunter, but the, the vibes – definitely aren't good in Atlanta right now. Uh, it clearly affected Trey and his play going six for 19 from the field. Um, and, and I agree with Eddie SGA. I think when, when these guys get all this media and these accolades as a player, it pisses you off, especially when you think and you know you're better than them. And SGA has kind of took over this year and he has really grown. I, he's no doubt an all-star. He's no doubt most improved player. Like this guy is absolutely torching the league and he's doing it in so many different ways. And you could tell he wanted to go at Trey. He was not going to lose this game. And on the flip side, this is the type of stuff that Trey can't allow to happen in Atlanta. He's the leader of their team. He, he can't give hmm. these distractions to the media. He cannot allow any sort of fracturing and splintering for the team. And, and this is all on him. This is, he, he has the keys. He has the contract. They, they, they get guys in and out. They've switched the coach for him. Like he's got to take ownership on this or else they're going to keep losing, you know, games like this. Well, let's stay on that because Trey did address the, uh, the elephant in the room before last night's game. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard for people who don't know the full situation to, to understand it. So, I mean, it's, like I said, it's a private matter again, and it made public, which was unfortunate. Um, and if it was stayed private, it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal. But uh, like I said, it's unfortunate. My, my job and my goal is to, to win a championship, and that's all I focus on. But you can see the perception, though, Trey. You are a leader of this team, and when you're not there to yeah, support when your you, guys. When you're, when you're an outside guy like you are, and you don't understand in a private matter, in a private situation. Uh, you should probably stay on the outside. And like I said, it's unfortunate that everybody has to understand and, and know a little bit of the details that went on inside. But, um, I mean, inside here, we're all good. And, uh, I mean, if you got any more questions about that, then you can you can talk to somebody else about it. That's all I got to say about it. So yes. much. Uh, Shams, how dare you do your job as an NBA insider reporting on an NBA job <laughs> that happened about the job itself? What What do you have to say for yourself, Shams? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm sorry that I had to, I had to do my job. I mean, of, of course, a lot of stuff <laughs> it, is, is better if it's if it's left private. But, you know, we got to, you know, I also got to, uh, you know, I got a job to do. I, I, I do think Trey, I'm sure they understand that. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It's something that happened on Friday. He didn't, if he had showed up to the arena, even if he didn't play, I, I don't, I don't know if we would have 
I probably would have heard it. I, I honestly don't don't even know. But um, I think it mm. definitely was exasperated, made a bigger deal by him not showing up to the arena. But I'm, I'm curious Chandler's thoughts on, on right? seeing that type of response out of your leader. Yep. Yeah, this is, I mean, he could have kind of just nipped it in the bud here and kind of been over with it. And and again, this is this is a poor way to handle a situation like this. This this isn't how you lead. This isn't how you this isn't how you do media. This is and again, it's funny now being in the media, like Trey's my boy, but like this this isn't acceptable. He he can't with the with the ownership he has, with the responsibility he's been given as the best player, as an all-star franchise centerpiece on the team. He can't allow these type of things to kind of leak into the media. And and then last night, literally, he could have just did the report, said, listen, you know, I made a mistake. I should have went to the game, whatever, anything other than what he just did. And then go out and ball last night and beat a team that's trying to lose. Uh, This was just this. This wasn't how you handle media. And he knows that. And, And I think. You know, I think eventually he's going to mature a little bit more and come around. But th- yeah, this 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 isn't how you handle a situation, especially as your franchise star player. Yeah, you know what wasn't uh, private was the game against the Nuggets on Friday that they won without yep. him, and he clearly was not in the arena on the bench or anywhere to be found. Uh, sorry, Trey. Like this, this, this is how it works. This, this is a story that was bound to get out. Everybody was wondering where you were and what the issue was. Um, w- what you see in in that answer, and then him immediately saying, "I'm done talking about it," is a clear lack of accountability. He, exactly like Sandler said, he could have said, "Hey, I made a mistake, and and we're putting it behind us, and I'm back, and and whatever it is, he could have came up with to say other than, uh, "Yeah, I wish this didn't go public." That's kind of like the good old uh, get caught cheating and you're mad you got caught. You're, you're not really sad or sorry that you cheated. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, nothing is solved here. They they, no. they lost with him. They won without him against a better team a few days back. And it just yeah. looks a little crazy is all. And that's the worst part about it for him is without him, they go to Denver and they beat a very good team. And then with him, they they lose to a team that's not so good. So this this isn't this isn't shedding very much good light on him. And again, I think he will mature. I think he's a good dude. I just think he needs to handle situations like this a lot better. It felt like when the Warriors tape came out, we were more mad about the leak than the actual <laughs> contents of the video. You're like, nope, that's not it. Wrong focus. Uh, taking a quick break here. When we come back, the latest on Bradley Beal's injury, Jaws' new deal, and what's next for Kyrie Irving when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Yep, there it is. That's what happened on Sunday with the hammy uh, playing the Lakers. Bradley Beal going to be reevaluated. Shams, of course, with that tweet. So now we want to get the latest on the Bradley Beal situation. Shams, what do you have for us? So Beal had an MRI yesterday, and the hamstring strain isn't as bad as, as you know it, it could have been. But these slight hamstring strains, they can always be anywhere from 7 to 10 days at the very least. So he's going to be out a minimum of a week. Uh, three games coming up, including... Uh, the Bulls game uh, tomorrow, and then I, b- I believe this weekend they also play John Wall coming back to D.C. So he's he's going to miss those three games uh, over the next week, uh, and then and then he's going to be back. But anytime you have these soft tissue injuries, uh, you want to be careful with them. Uh, you know, the big I think this was a big story yesterday, business wise, Shabs. You had the story about Nike making it officially, officially over uh, with Kyrie. What was the what is the background, I guess, on that decision? So they they suspended uh, their relationship indefinitely last month. And then yesterday, Nike said that they have uh, essentially server ties, parted ways with Kyrie Irving. I'm told it was mutual. I think both sides were ready to move forward and move on. Uh, This is a guy who had one of the best signature shoes in the (laughs) NBA. He's now going to be a sneaker free agent. And from everything I'm told, uh, this has been in the works for a while now. John Morant is set to get his own signature shoe deal at Nike, um, you know, in the very near future, uh, I don't think I think this is going to be inevitable anyway. Uh, but of course, given that Kyrie Irving's out, John Morant is going to be coming in with his own signature shoe deal. But Kyrie Irving, he had one of the best lines in the league for about over the last decade or so. Um, but he is no longer a Nike athlete. That is, I mean, look, we knew given everything that went down with Kyrie and all of that, um, that this was going to happen. But 
God, that is such a big deal. What What do you guys think happens next? Like, where do we see Kyrie? Who picks him up? Does he get his shoe deal? I'm a little fascinated by this one. What do you guys predict, Chandler? Yeah, I, I think somebody. I think he could go to an Asian brand and make a lot of money. Or I think someone, in, you know, in America will sign him. He, he's he's still got a lot of basketball left to play. And like we just talked about, his shoe. I I hate a lot of sneakers. His shoe is really really good. And so um, I, I think he'll yeah. kind of land somewhere else. And you know, I think he's still got some good basketball ahead of him. Yeah, I think you know for Kyrie, the options are limitless. One of the things to look out for, though, is with Adidas getting out of the Kanye business, you wonder if they're going to be a little wary about getting into the Kyrie business. With <laughs> Look, they're not the same guy. They're not one and the same. But the way they've been lumped together publicly and all of the issues that has brought about, you wonder if Adidas, which is the second biggest name on the, on this, on the market, will balk at that. But there's a ton of money to be made overseas. Um, one of the Chinese brands, what many players have done. Kyrie is one of the more marketable players in the league, whether you like it or not, and whether it's for the good or bad reasons. And he's shown at Nike that he can be the number one sneaker seller in the league, despite being nowhere close to being the best player or most popular. He's he's right. had a great run of sneakers with, with Nike and that brand will hold strong. He seemed pretty confident about it. He let Shams know about it personally yesterday that he's, he's rolling through Um, It is kind of crazy that, yeah, over the summer there were rumors that this was coming about and mostly was shook off. I know his deal was coming up soon and people were thinking, yo, he might get the lifetime deal that these guys typically get as they get up to 10, 12, 15 years with the brand. And, you know, it's all out the window now. And who knows? Shams, I can't wait for you to do the documentary on how much money Kyrie Irving will have left on the table when it's all said and done. Like, it's not like he's broke. I mean, he's left a lot of money. I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't think Kyrie Irving's hurting for money. I think between his Nike deal, which was at least 10 to 12 million and then royalties, and then you've got two maximum NBA contracts, like, I, and, and from what I've, everything I gather, like, he's done, he's done right with his money. So I don't think he's hurting, but I mean, when you look back a couple summers ago, a couple off seasons ago in 2021, I believe, I'm losing track of time. He was <laughs> eligible for a five year, $186 million extension that literally, um, you know, if he had gotten vaccinated and was fully ready to right. go, he he could have he could have signed that, and and he ends up not taking the vaccine, and then you know that extension isn't on the table anymore. He plays out the year. Then last year couldn't reach an agreement. There were multiple offers that were made, weren't fully guaranteed. He doesn't sign it, and then now you know he, he's going to the last year of his deal, and and he's going to be a free agent this summer. We'll see what his market is. This is yeah, like this, the Matt Damon. This is the Matt Damon model because Matt Damon apparently was offered Avatar in a 10% cut. It would have been a $283 million paycheck, and he said no. He's not broke, but that was $283 million that was left on the table. <laughs> like if That hurts, right? It's got to, Chandler. Yeah, and, and no one feels bad for him because this is all self like Well, someone's going nuts down there. Uh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this is all self-inflicted. This is all stuff that he could control. He should still be the face of Nike. He should be under contract for the next four or five years with the Nets. Like, this isn't like a pity party for him. There, I, I don't know his finances, but there's no way the guy's hurting for money. He's made so much money, and I still think he's going to make a lot more money, but... Mm-hmm. Just a weird situation where it's a head scratcher. Like he did this all to himself, and so now it's it's hard to feel bad for the guy at this point. Shams, as yeah, always, Shams mentions, oh. which well, I was oh. going to mention that which Shams, Shams said about last year is a great point. You know, yeah. the Nets were coming off that tough seven game series loss to the Bucks, bunch of injuries, uh, but Kevin Durant he resigned his max deal early. Uh, James Harden and Kyrie were both eligible to, to sign extensions, and they could have locked. All four of them, all three of those Jeez. guys up for four and five years. Went to to the uh, training camp, no drama at all. And media day, we find out Kyrie isn't vaccinated, and it just goes to hell from there. And it never has looked back. Here we are, eighteen months or a year and a half later. Man, this documentary is going to be so good. Shams, as always, appreciate you. Thank you. We'll see you manana. But guys, we got to do a little. You buying that? And we're going to start things off with Mr. Jeremy Grant. Look, he's got more Thanks. points per game than. Zach Levine, Jimmy Butler, Brandon Ingram, and Cat, plus a career high in points and threes. Are you buying that the Blazers should make a long-time commitment, Chandler? 
Uh, yeah, listen, the kid is hooping. He's 23, 4, and 3. And it's not fair to say he's averaging more points than these guys because they've been out with injuries and inconsistent. But we talked about this when we first got on the show. And, uh, you know, as like a 4 or 5 option in Denver, it wasn't an and as the main option in Detroit, it was too much. So now he's found a rhythm with this team where he got, you know, guys like Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons who don't do anything that he does. And he can kind of be that third fiddle and kind of be the second or first option some nights when those guys are out. So I, I can't help but think they should have signed this guy when they had CJ McCollum and when they were making those runs. But yeah, I think, you know, he's young enough. He's shooting 46% from the three, which is, I don't know how long he can sustain that, but he kind of is one of these big long wings that can do it all. And and with those two guards, uh, it, it seems like a great fit and they're playing well this year. So I would, I would definitely extend him because yeah, there's not much better in the market that I think Portland could go out and get in free agency. Something's going on. Something's going on up there. Eddie, I got you. I got you. Pelicans time. How about the Pelicans right now? Sitting pretty second in the West. They are, I don't know, one eight of their last 10. Are you buying them as a possible Western Conference final participant? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, the, the example I keep using with them is the Hawks two years ago. You know, they get the right matchups. Uh, they, they, they weather the storm a little bit with just kind of getting their experience and getting their feet wet in the playoffs. They can absolutely win two playoff series. You know, with home court, they're looking at playing, what, the Lakers in, in, in one round and, and possibly the Kings in another. They can absolutely win both of those series. They have a ton of playoff experience on their roster. We're talking about C.J. McCollum, a guy who's made a game seven game winner on the road in the playoffs. Uh, Brandon Ingram got his first taste of that last year. They have a three-headed snake that can make all their offense work and can keep up with anybody else in the league. And they're just set up well. And credit to Willie Green. He's you know, he's a young coach. He got his first shot at, at it last year. Um, coming up in that Warrior system under Steve Kerr as well, learning the ropes. He's got these guys ready, and they look like a great team. They look like a real dark horse contender. They're fun to watch. Like I, I will say that till the end. I think they're really fun to watch. Uh, OG Ananobi, the only player this season so far with 400 points, 45 steals. He has shut down, here's the list, Donovan Mitchell, Doncic, KD, Jimmy Butler, and DeJounte Murray in five of his last six games, Chandler. Are you buying him as defensive player of the year right now? Uh, I am. And, and this is what the league is becoming. These six, seven to six, nine guys that can switch everything. They can do a little bit of everything. Um, there's no surprise that the Celtics are, Celtics are the best team in the league. They have two of these guys that can do what he's doing. And, uh, you know, I love this kid. He, he hurt his knee coming out of the drafts and he fell in the draft and he's just grinded ever since. And he's become, a, you know, a hell of a player. And, you know, stats don't lie. This is a guy that is becoming a lockdown fender. He can guard smaller guys. He can switch onto them stay in front of him use his length he can guard bigger guys in the post he you know guys like marcus smart are saying that you know given his vote saying i would be surprised if he's in the hunt and wins defensive player of the year you know when other hoopers are gassing you up you know it's real and so this guy's got the respect of other guys and and, and he's become a hell of a two-way player Eddie, I, I like predicting what you're going to get say on this next one uh debonda simonis leading the league in 10 10 5 games so are you buying that the Sacramento Kings won the Halliburton Sabonis trade? Uh, I'm going to say no, just because Tyrese is younger. Uh, right. That doesn't mean that the Kings aren't doing well. That doesn't mean he doesn't fit there well. I mean, this is the Demonis Sabonis we've seen his entire career, really. 10, 10, and 5 is such an arbitrary stat, but it does tell you that, <laughs> yo, he's, he's good for a double-double every night. And if you watch the Kings, they run most of their offense through him in the high post. And, and, and with De'Aaron Fox in pick and roll, uh, he's been great for them. You, you, they made the decision not to pair Tyrese and, and De'Aaron, and that's fine. Uh, but I like what Indy got out of that trade as well. And, and, and Tyrese is cheaper now, so that, that matters a little bit for that going forward too. But he's been great. Baby bonus. I love him. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, have I, wanted this I, one because I, I would not have known how to answer this one because they both right? – this- this is a great trade for both teams, honestly. I love the energy and the excitement in Sacramento with, with Sabonis and those guys, but also Halliburton is straight hooping in Indies. So this this is a tough one. Yeah, it feels like a rare trade where everybody's smiling, and that doesn't everybody's seem to happen. Happy. Right? It doesn't happen very often. How about James Wiseman? I know so much was expected out of this kid, and of course now he's down in the G League. He's averaging a little over 15 points a game, uh, 10 rebounds. He's had seven games down there. Chandler, <clears throat> 
Are you buying that he will at some point be a key bench player for the Warriors this season? This this season, I don't think so. No, I'm not buying right. that. And I, I'm 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 so let down by this kid because I think this is it was the perfect situation when he was drafted. He had the perfect ideal facilitating four defender and Draymond, he had two of the best shooters of all time. Jordan Poole kind of grow. Andrew Wiggins, he has all this talent around him that really all he has to do is play hard and remember the plays, and he should succeed in this offense. And clearly there's something wrong, but the G League thing is weird because I – when I was young, I'm not like a G League type of player. When they were talking about sending me down to the league, I'm not like a go get buckets. I'm not an ISO guy. So I probably would have looked way worse in the G League than I did in the NBA in like a tailored offensive system where I'm getting looks. But if I'm the NBA guy going down there, these guys are gunning for him. He can't really create his own shot. So his value to me isn't measured by his G League stats because there's plenty of guys that would not be great in the G League that are very good in the NBA. And I think he may just be one of them. But yeah, he's he's a head scratcher because he should be so good. He's got the physical tools, he's got the size, and he's got the players around him to have the easiest job in the league. And he's just not taking advantage of it. Chandler, would you just have been pissed off at the idea of you having to go to the G League at all? Would that have been part of the shutdown? There was when I was drafted, I was the second round pick, and the Morris Tone was the first round pick. And they basically told me, like, get ready. Houston sends everyone to the G League. And I was just like, like, that's not my idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, to yeah, plane, and I went to the plane and I'm like, where's Marcus Morris? And he went down to the G League. And I was like, yeah, <gasps> I, I never had to play, I never, I never had to play a game down there. Yeah, I feel like some people are just wired differently. I don't know. I don't know how that one would go. Uh, taking a quick break right now. When we come back, should players call their own fouls? Probably. Uh, and is one team maybe already making moves for Wimbin Yaba when Run It Back returns? Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. I don't know if my uh, lady have anything planned for me. I hope they have something planned for me. Maybe like a birthday cake. <laughs> maybe like a birthday card. Or maybe like a birthday watch or maybe a jewelry. I would love that. I don't know if my family is watching right now, they should go get get them. Other than once I put my kids uh, to bed, you never know what can happen, you know? <laughs> <laughs> might get a little bit freaky. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday. Yeah. You know what? The accent, you can get away with murder. You could say anything you want with that good accent, but like the Homer Simpson thing, okay. You guys good with the Giannis Freaky Time story or anybody want to chime in with their own Freaky Time birthday stories, Eddie? <laughs> I do not want to chime in with any Freaky Time birthday stories. No, no, thank you. Fine. No fun at all. Then we'll just get right to it, I guess. Uh, but happy birthday to Giannis. Look, Spurs. <laughs> oh, this is tricky, tricky territory for me. They have lost 11 straight, sitting right huh. there last uh, in the West. But look, everybody knows that this is the year where Victor Wembanyama probably going to be the prize um it's a 14 percent chance at best right to, to get that spot but what do you guys think about what's going on so far here in san antonio i'm staying out of this one chandler you go first i mean let's they're they're actually sticking to the plan that these other teams <laughs> are blowing. Uh, and it's smart because you do not want to be in this no man's land middle of the pack or even a little a little bit better like you know like the rockets and the thunder these guys winning these games it it, it does nothing besides lower your percentage and and i know 14% is not that much, but they're not going to make the play in They're They're not going to make the playoffs. And if they do snuck in there magically, somehow they're not going to advance. So they are taking this season to play the young guys, hopefully find some young talent and, and, and lose at all costs. And, and this kid is supposed to be the next, you know, unicorn player. And, and they, they want him. And it looks like they want him a lot the last 11 games. And, this kid's a franchise changer. So, you know, once this happens and they do get the number one pick, no one's going to talk about how bad, how miserable this season was because they're going to have this kid doing things like this in a Spurs jersey and it will all be worth it. Yeah, if, if I know anything about Pop, uh, and Beetle can probably back me here, he's just about as competitive as he gets. So when I look at the standings and I see the, the Magic have 20 losses already and the Pistons actually have a worse record Percentage-wise, I'm expecting him to double and triple down on on really, really losing some more games coming up pretty soon. So, you know, 11 straight, that's just not going to cut it for Pop. He's really going to want to make this happen. Shout out to Tim Duncan for 
coming and checking out a game. Nice leather right. jacket. He Good to see great. he's still doing his thing. He's got the dreads going. Looks happier. Right? He kind of did the. He kind of doing the Kobe. Like he looks happier now that he's done playing than he looked yeah. when he was stressed out playing. But yeah, pops. He he's not gonna let this be competitive in any way, shape, or form. So you know, shout out to them. <laughs> Hopefully, they get the third pick and they get a Thompson twin and 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 they got to deal with that. But they've done this once in my lifetime you. and they got Timmy and it's just not fair. So let's not let them do it twice. Well, first of all, it would be more than fair because uh, our fan base deserves it. We're awesome. Secondly, Timmy looked great. Looks like he's aging like a fine wine. Maybe got a stylist. I don't know. And thirdly, in defense of the Spurs, who started out pretty hot, 30% at minimum of their roster is sitting on that bench every game. Okay. So there, I don't think they're trying to lose. That's my <laughs> me doing my job. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Moving on. I really don't. I think they're trying. It's just really, really, it's not great right now. Um, But we do want to talk a little bit of traveling calls. We touched on this like a few shows ago, just because there had been such a blow up in the amount of the number of traveling calls being made right now. It has doubled from October to November, 13 travel calls in Sunday's Knicks Mavs game alone. That would be the most in one game since March of 2007. And you know how much we love ref whistles in games. So I ask you guys, Chandler, is this whole point of emphasis on traveling, is this good? I don't think it's good for viewing. I don't think it's good for the game. But we, like last night, I'm sitting there courtside. They also missed like 10 to 15 travel calls. So, the, so that's where I'm, <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it. Because if, the, if they're going to make it a point of emphasis and they're going to be consistent, you can't missed as many travel calls as they did last night so i don't think i think it's whack i think it's kind of going to bog down the game it's going to kind of fans aren't going to love it but they are travel so like i I see it both sides but if if they're going to make this a a, they could call carry on every other play Mm -hmm. in an nba game they could call travel everyone goes so quick and splits their feet and they switch their pivot foot there's oh, so gosh. many missed calls that it's impossible to get them all. So I just don't see why, why this rule, why this violation, because it's really just slowing down the rhythm of the game. There. This is Giannis's league. Let them walk. Like just, <laughs> it's over. Just give up on it. <laughs> just let them walk. You're right though. If you're going to do it, do it or don't do it. It just seems sort of half for me, but yeah. we're taking a break. Get your balloons ready. Get your cake. Get everything because we did it. We hit a parlay and we're gonna make it two in a row today. Lock it down, run it back. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it. We just need to celebrate this moment. Uh look at the green check marks, guys. You did it. You who wants to give a speech? Anyone? I, I look, I I I have a <laughs> bottle of wine. I want to celebrate. I know I don't have to tell Chandler twice. We could I got this wine from France. I was keeping it for a special occasion. Obviously. I feel like the night out in New York really like really brought <gasps> us together right. when it came to this. Yeah, we got some in-person chemistry going and, yeah. and we took a player hostage to the Cowboys game. I think it's the only way. <laughs> That's the only way. To- <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We're off the schneid and we're going to stay hot. Yep, that's right. Can, the streak can we frame continues. That? Well, we have, we Jason, have, we are we making sure. that screenshot? Can we send it? Can we put it up in the office? Can we make sure I want to commemorate it correctly? Yeah, yeah I like, some make merch. a hat out of it. Some merch. Uh, all right, so the pressure's <laughs> on now to build the streak. Eddie, you're up next for today's. What do you got? I'm, ta- I'm taking the points with the Lakers tonight. Uh, LeBron's big return. They've won eight out of twelve, eight out of ten. The Cavs have actually lost six out of the last ten. So, what, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to go with the King, man. I'm going to go with that. And uh, I'm taking Jokic is over 24 Ooh. and a half points against the Mavericks. The Mavs on a second night of a back-to-back. They have basically 1.2 centers on that roster, and none of them can guard Jokic anyway. So 25 should be easy for my, for the big fella. Okay. Okay. Chandler? I was actually going to take the Cavs until, until Eddie said his pick. <laughs> so I had to switch it up. But a bat, let me tell you, there's not a worse back-to-back then playing somewhere and then the second leg being in Denver. So I Oof. like Luca under, I done this before with him and he's proved me wrong, but I, I think it's too much. There's, there, like I said, the altitude uh, nuggets, nuggets at home. I like them four and a half and I like Luca under his points just because that is a gnarly, gnarly, gnarly back to back. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, the possible second of our streak, 20 bucks wins you 185. I feel good about it. 
We're going to have a good night. It's a light night in the NBA. Enjoy yourselves. We will be back tomorrow to celebrate our second straight parlay win.